we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video covering the taper modifier here in 3D Coat Sculpt Room. And let's start with a Reptile Brush Alpha. And I'll load a file that I've already created. Again, it's in your Documents 3D Coat. You want to go to your User Data. It, this is where it's going to be stored by default. Store Data. Then you have your different folders here to save the different types of profiles. So I have that one. OK. And I already have rotate along stroke, spacing, that's about right. Probably want to use pin pressure. And since I want to make short strokes, I want to reduce the taper length. Adjust my depth down. I don't need that much depth. Be a slight surface indentation. And after making all these different adjustments, you may be thinking to yourself, hey man, I don't want to have to keep doing this each time. Well, you don't have to. You can simply store a preset. Okay, once you have everything adjusted the way you want, you think you may want to get back to it in this session or at any point on another project, you can simply go to your presets panel here. And if you don't see it in your UI, you can always access it from your Windows pop-ups menu, okay, tool presets. So whenever you have a brush or tool that you have set up exactly the way you want, even including your taper profile, all these different adjustments that you can make, okay, you can store them in a simple preset, add preset right here. So I'll click on that. And it stores the tool icon as well as all your different relevant options, such as your type of brush you're using, the draw mode, as well as your brush alpha, and so on. So I can double click on that, rename it, let's say Reptile. And I probably want to give it a name that reflects the fact that I have a taper profile applied to it. And as you may have noticed, the profile that I saved and reloaded applied tapering at the very beginning and the end of the stroke, which is perfect for areas like this where you want smaller proportions in the tight spaces such as the eye socket, yet larger proportions in areas like the cheek and so on. And so if you want to scale these up or down, here in the Sculpt Room, we don't yet have this capability. However, once you're in the later stages of your workflow where you are actually in the texture painting stage, you do have that capability to go back and modulate the different details. And maybe one last example is working with skin folds. Let's try the pinch brush. And with our tapering, let's change that a little bit. Right click and change the point type to B spline. We add a point right here. OK. So with the pinch brush and enabling brush pressure in the taper dialog, we can get a more natural look when working with wrinkles and skin folds in the eye region and other areas. Let's change the stroke length. So yeah, you definitely want to set up some presets for the pinch tool. Anytime you're working on wrinkles, it has a natural tapering effect on the ends anyhow. So this saves you from having to sculpt the indentations and then come back and clean it up with your pinch tool. You can do it all in one stroke for the most part.
reduce the length again, keep it very short. And then I can come over to the extrude brush, which is basically the same thing as inflate in other applications. And again, I'll load. Bring my length down. OK. Change to a brush. And the length also is very much relative to the size of your brush. So, for example, with a very small brush, it's a very short stroke. But if I increase my brush radius, you can see the length is much longer. Okay, so the larger the brush, the longer the stroke. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the demonstration in the sculpt room. Let's move on over to the paint room, and you can see that it works here as well. You'll find it in the same location in the toolbar, right next to Radius. Enable tapering. Let's go with this other color here. Turn my depth channel on. Change my brush to the first one here. So this is a reminder that even in the paint room, whenever you switch to another tool, you're going to want to check your taper settings because 3D Coat memorizes those per tool. So definitely keep that in mind. I'm going to shorten the brush stroke here and maybe undo the pressure sensitivity. Works really well here, just as it did in the sculpt room. And so that will conclude this look at the taper modifier in 3D Coat. I think you'll find it very helpful. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.